Good evening, good morning, and good night, depending on where you are tuning in from. And if you're liking the music so far, give thanks to Calabash. Yes, a little bit of Caribbean jazz from Calabash. And I don't own the rights to music, but I have the rights to play the music. Compliments of Anthony Pierre. And oh, you need to get the album. I always tell you, if you don't have this album by now, you're missing out. We're listening to From Whence We Came. And it's a beautiful, beautiful Monday evening here in Toronto. And it's it started off a little low and gloomy, but now the sun is out and it's bright and it doesn't feel like eight o'clock. It feels more like five o'clock. I hope you're here joining me live. And if you're live, tell me where you're tuning in from. So welcome to the Victory Speaks show. And you know, this is your opportunity to grab that notepad. You know, we love to drop wisdom keys here. It's time for another inspired conversation. And I'm your host, Nicole Waldron, your voice of victory and your mental fitness coach. And I'm on a mission to inspire you to live a life of victory, a victorious lifestyle. Now, you know, one thing I have recognized that no matter what, the type of conversation we have, good, bad, funny, you name it, it can be inspiring. It's all about perspective. Now, throughout the last 50 plus shows, you have met many of the people that have inspired me. Some I've known a long time and some I've just met along the way. And their conversations are kept lifting me up and I hope they keep lifting you up because conversations can make you have a great impact on your life. Now, you know, I always talk about iron sharpeners. If you've been tuned into Victory Speaks, you know you need to have an iron sharpener in your life the person who sharpens you, the person who builds you up, no matter what part of your life you're in. And tonight I want to introduce you to a very special individual. She is one of my iron sharpeners. She's one of my mentors and has become a beloved friend and sister. She is one of the co-founders of 100 ABC Women. She is Donna Joan Simmons. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her before I bring her to the Victory Speak stage. She is born in St. Kitts and migrated to Canada over 35 years ago and has had firsthand knowledge and experience about the roadblocks and challenges encountered by new Canadians. She is not only the co-founder of 100 ABC Women, she's the president of DEJS, Diversity Consulting, and she is a customer Focus Human Resource Diversity Executive. Donna Joan Simmons has extensive experience in coaching and mentoring, recruiting and training, as well as creating and delivering strategic programs with the goal of integrating diversity into the workplace. She has designed and facilitated many diversity workshops and has a unique blend of interpersonal and a positive focus. As a result, has won numerous awards for her leadership style, results orient, orientation, and diversity efforts. She has held managerial and executive positions in the banking industry and not-for-profit organizations with a focus on, yes, diversity and inclusion. She is currently the chair of the board of directors for ACES Employment, which focuses on assisting new Canadians who seek employment. And she has been and still is the only black member of the Rotary Club of Toronto. Okay, folks, give me your emojis. Give me your love because I'm about to bring up the lady of the hour to the Victory Speak Shade, Donna Jones Simmons. Woo! Hello, hello, hello. Night. <laughs> we got we to give you the round of applause. Look at that. Sarah Oyango is joining us already from Gatineau, Quebec. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us tonight. Oh, and she said she's been finally looking forward to this. Well, Donna, you're bringing in the celebrities already. You oh. got you got Sarah coming in all the way from Ottawa to tune in. Fantastic. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm doing just wonderful. So as you said earlier, it's all about perspective. How it you look is. Life. Yeah. So I'm just wonderful. I feel very blessed. You know, over the past year, so many things have happened. And uh, I think we all ought to be grateful that we are. We can get up in the morning and say our morning prayers and say hello and talk to a friend and be on the Victory Speech show. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> how, has the, how has the pandemic 
affected you? Like, what have you learned from the pandemic about yourself? It has affected me in some ways. I always was a work at home person. So that way it didn't affect me. But it brought out my ability to be a little more creative. Mm. It brought me um, to think about my technical skills and build it up. So having a show like this and working on Zoom and all those other technical tools, I never thought I'd be using them. But here am I today. And, you know, I'm just loving it. I can't believe the world is going to change this much. It's very exciting. Yeah. You become an expert because I've been seeing what you've been doing and I'm floored. I'm learning from you because you're just like, you're just like a whippersnapper at this whole technical stuff. There's still stuff I have to learn. And you're just, you're just zooming ahead with what you're doing. And people are going to find out a lot more. I, I'm curious about some things. We're going to have some fun before we get into the 100 ABC women and what they're doing. Yeah. Tell me who or what anchors you? You know, I'm going to say my husband. It sounds very cheesy, but it is really him. Um, wow. We've been married for over 40 years. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I, actually, we dated for eight years. So, you know, I don't know about that. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. Spicy. Yeah, 48 years together. But, you know, he has taught me to be patient mm. and to think about things before I do things. So he has been my anchor. Um, you know, when I'm down, he's there for me. I can't think of a time when he says, you're on your own. When I wanted to retire, I said to him, you know, it, and that was in 2013. I said, I want to retire. I'm just tired of working. And I had major surgery that year. So it was, you know, I, I don't know if I want to go back to work. I said, would you support me? He said, absolutely. Absolutely. And he has been a man of his word since. So yes, he is my anchor. And I of course, that. you know, I, I can't talk about the women in for 100 ABC, people like yourself, who have been there for me, supporting me, encouraging me, the Jean Augustines, the Denise, the Nicole's, you know, all of those people, the Michelle Green, the Sarah, I can't talk about these people enough. I just love you guys, how you support me. No, no person can do things alone. My father used to say, no one is an island. So true. No one is an island. So I rely on the good life and the good love from you guys. And that's what anchors me, really. I feel like I can give, I'm, I'm taking that hug. I'm taking that love hug tonight. I'm taking that love hug tonight. You, you need to, you need to. Don't, don't do like many women say, no, nah, no, nah, I have nothing to do with it. Yes, you do. Think you about know, people reason. who are depressed. And yeah. you guys lift me up. I could be very well one of those people, very depressed. No, you lift me up. And, and you know, you've gone through so much in the last year and a half. Yes. And yes. and in addition to your husband and, and those friends, what really has kept you going, kept that smile? Because you show up no matter what. You always still show up for everybody. How do you do that? You know, if I were doing it for me, Nicole, I would probably be in bed all the time. I'm mm. doing it for every single black woman in Canada. Mm. Every single one. They deserve support. They've been invisible for far too long. We need to make them visible. I tell them, you know, it's about you. It's not about me. They should be actually on this show, not me. <laughs> you know, and I should be there boosting them on, you know. Right. I shouldn't be here. Because it's not about me. It's about them. It's about you guys who've done so much and don't get the credit for it, the credit that you deserve. You know, I, I thank you for saying that. But, you know, we wouldn't be here without you. What, what give you that, like, even that unction to recognize that w women need to be celebrated? Because you don't just celebrate what I recognize about you. You don't just, you're not cliquish. You don't, you don't celebrate those women that have been always been celebrated. You go and find the women that, people don't really celebrate or know about. Why is that so important to you, Donna? It's the little people, if you don't mind me calling it for a second, yeah. the little people, the people who are the doers and don't get the recognition are my people. They are my people. Mm -hmm. I remember working at American Express and I always went to the kitchen to say hello, hi to the women in the kitchen. That was important to me. 
they're the ones who made sure you got food on that day. You yes. Lunch, they made sure. Those are the people we need to recognize. And I call them the little people, not because they're little, they're more powerful than we think, but they're the people who keep the world going, who keep us going, keep the clock ticking. See, this is why you're my sister friend, because, you know, it's funny you say that. And I remember when I was at the Senate, you know, the people that I fell in love with and that I would always go check were the women in the cafeteria. And we would sit and have these conversations and and it was just, just such life. And you knew if something was wrong, you, you're like, we're such and such today. And there was that rapport, which was so different than when you were in the office where there's a different environment. It, it, I just love the fact you and Joan have this way that you just celebrate, celebrate everybody and you see the essence of who we are. And Absolutely. that makes you supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Oh. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. So, so if you, if you had, if you had the ability to choose anybody dead or alive, I know I didn't tell you, I was going to ask you this, who would you want to go to dinner with and why? You know, I'm going to say my sister who passed away last year, mm -hmm. Loretta. She was my best, one of my best friends. I, I shouldn't say best friend, one, my best friend, because a lot of people mm -hmm. get jealous of that. I have a lot of best friends. But she was my one of my best friends. I could call Loretta in the middle of the night and say, let's go so and so. Oh, I'm not feeling well. Right. She took off what she had, and she was here for me all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And I miss her so much that, if I could live my life over again, I would take her to dinner every single day. Wow. She was such a kind hearted, thoughtful person. She died in June last year, Mother's Day. She was baking biscotti and brought it to my home for Mother's Day. She was not feeling well, mm. but she was not complaining. Her time was near. Yeah. And, um, that was who Loretta was. Only give, never want to take. She went on every trip with me, wherever we went, and it's not going to be there anymore. I want dinner with her. That is special. And Very you know, special. she had a big, she had a huge heart. And I can see that that heart emanates in you. It emanates mm -hmm. in you in everything that you do. And, um, it reminds us to live life to the fullest and to live life giving back without mm -hmm. expectation because that's what that's what she did. And and I thank you for sharing that beautiful memory with us. And and so what were your early years like when you came here to Canada from the beautiful island of St. Kitts? By the way, you need to take me on vacation there, just saying, just putting it out there. Just putting yeah. it out there. I miss my lovely island. Um and I, I didn't really want to come to Canada yet because I played netball. I was a sports av av um, avid sports fan and love my sports. But my sisters were here. They all were here. I was the last person from the 14 children my parents had to come to Canada. So it, it was a case where I needed to be with my family after a while. And, you know, my boyfriend that time, my husband, he was, um, he was in, in New Jersey. So life was getting quieter and quieter. But growing up in St. Kitts, it was just amazing. Coming to Canada early years, it was a family reunion. My brothers and my sisters were all here, and we were just having a wonderful, amazing time together. Um, getting, being here in Canada was a little depressing for me mm -hmm. because when you are away from the country, all you know is that Canada may be a land of gold and silver and myrrh and all the good stuff. And you came with that kind of expectation, not expecting to be shunned of jobs. Yes. Um, told you need to have a um, uh, Canadian experience. Canadian experience. Yes. What, what shocked me was uh, when I read the newspaper and I saw in the newspaper, um, they were looking for dishwashers, but you must have Canadian experience. And I said, I want to go back home. Wow. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> this doesn't make sense to have Canadian. We wash dishes all the time. So, but I plotted on. I plotted on and I took the lowest jobs I got, whatever it paid, you know, $5 an hour. I was happy with that. My sisters and my brother, they all 
pushed me and supported me while I was, you know, going through this funk, mm -hmm. as I call it. And then I finally hit the jackpot. I got a job that was a decent job, a typist. Oh, you call it a decent job. Yes, it was for me at that time. Yeah. Got a, because, but that is the job that propelled me to better, better opportunities. And that was at, at that time. It's called a CAMH now, but it used to be called Addiction Research Foundation. Stop it. Yes, I worked for several years there um, for researchers. And then... How am I now finding this out, Donna Joan Simmons? I don't know. You, I don't talk a lot about myself because life is not about me. Um, <laughs> then I went to the addiction. Then I went to the University of Toronto, uh, where I stayed there for about nine years. Yes, and I built a human resources department that didn't exist um, for one of their subsidiaries called Atlas. I have to right. build build their policies, their human resources policies. And at that time I was going to school and everything. I was not finally married and pregnant and going to school and working part-time, working full-time to survive because, you know, the wages weren't that very uplifting as you probably figured out. And so, you know, my early years in Canada were interesting, but I've, le I've lived to tell the stories and to pass on those experiences to people, um, or to the younger generation, to my mentees, to help them through it, how to get around certain things. Um, because life can be rough and you need to know how to manipulate those journeys, those difficult roads ahead of you. And the roadblocks, of course. This explains so much. And to everybody tuning in, we're live with Donna Joan Simmons. I always want to say Dr. John, Donna Joan Simmons for some reason. I always see you as a doctor. And um, yeah, you have this, you have this, just this way. You're always solving the, the problems. You're always bringing healing to everyone around you. And thank you. Uh, and, and getting to meet you um, through 100 ABC Women was such an honor. And, you know, as we're here tonight to talk about, you know, um, some of that, I, I'm getting more insight and understanding even to why you became involved. But how did you and, and Jean and Denise even come together? You know, because you come from so many different, you, you come, you know, Denise is in the U.S., you know, Jean is doing her thing and her political thing and her school and, and there are you doing human resources. How did you, the three of you even come together to do this 100 ABC a woman? Well, uh, interesting story. And I'm glad that you asked because I'm happy to tell, share that story because I often said the world is a small world. Right. It doesn't seem as though it's getting any bigger. It's getting smaller, by the way. So Jean and I had been in touch. We had been good friends. And I was managing an organization called JOIN at the time, which is for people with disabilities. So it was like a hub. And many agencies with disabilities um, would be part of this hub. So we were the lead hub. And we'd have events for them and stuff like that. So I, Jean, I invited Jean to be part of um, the board. And she joined the board. And then one day I got a call from her. So she says to me, I need you to meet a lady. I said, oh, okay. I said, she's, she's American. I said, oh, okay, all right. Um, so she says that um, she has a son who has a disability. He's in a wheelchair. And um, she needed to know what kind of support he can get mm -hmm. uh, job-wise, uh, you know, et cetera. And uh, needed to talk to me about it, given the, wor the work that I did and the role I played in the people with disabilities community. I said, absolutely. So I called Denise, she gave me Denise's number, we met and we had breakfast that morning. And we, we talked about you know, her son and the, the unfortunate situation that caused his disability. And we talked about meeting some more and stuff like that. And before you know it, Denise and I became such good friends that we were having that Sunday morning breakfast with the husbands, with her husband and my husband. And then one day she popped the question to me. She says, Donna, I've been looking for um, people who uh, I can employ, black women whom I can employ. Do you know of any? I said, what are you looking for? Then she said, you know, you know I'm looking for people who can be in the human resources department or diversity and inclusion. And I had a long pregnant pause. 
And I said, hmm, good question. Where are they? And I said to myself thereafter, if I have to have that big pregnant call, pause, sorry, to think about people we can refer to Denise, we have a problem. We should be able to whip these people just like that, uh, strike of a dime, and we, we make these referrals. So um, I said, you know what? Let's talk to Jean. She knows everybody. Jean knows <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and so we had a we had a meeting with Jean. We went to Jean's office and we talked. And um, I should say too, at that meeting with my the husbands, um, the husband said to her, Denise's husband, that is, said, you guys should write a book when you get all this information together. I said, oh, good idea. And I rolled my eyes as I usually do. <laughs> it's like, who's going to write a book and who's going to find the time to do that too? So how we began to talk, Jean and I and Denise began to talk about this stuff. And we had talked and talked and talked. I said, you know what? I'm going to take the initiative to get this started. So I set up meetings. As we talked about how it's going to work. Before you know it, the rest is history. We had our first wow. book launch and gala on June, I think it was June 16th, 2016. 2016. Can't remember, forget those that day. June 16th, 2016. What an amazing time we had. We had, oh, well, we're going to have about 300 people. Maybe 150. So, so that, that was what we were planning for. Right. And before you know, we were getting all these calls. I want to come. And so the room had a capacity for about 400 people. We had over six, 700 people who showed up. Wow, Donna. About that amount of people showed up. I'm saying, oh, my Lord. Oh, we're going to handle this. Of course, you, you have fire codes you have to adhere to. Of course, of course. And so it went on, and so there's a bit of confusion. I won't. I will confess, uh, because we didn't expect that amount mm -hmm. of people trying to get into the room. And so we said we have to have a bigger room. And so we decided to go a little bit um, east, uh, sorry, west, to have the next session. It was just an amazing experience, and the rest is history, as they say, in terms of having our book launch and galas. The first one was just incredible. It was just incredible. I had my nieces and nephews fly over from London, England for this event. I'm going, where are they going? I, you know, I didn't know writing a book was so important and would create such a havoc, I call it, because 700 people expected 350. And um, yeah, that's that's what happened. But what did that tell you when when you saw that so many people showed up? What did that really tell the three of you? the need to celebrate, to honor black women? Well, before that, I would say, you never know who you can connect to. Mm. For me, that was important. You never know, never dismiss a person's small story. Mm. No matter how small it is, listen to a person's story. Mm -hmm. There's always some credit to that. And so if I had not sit back and listen to Denise's story and then we get together and then have this event, you know, it tells me that we have to be together as black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, yes. can't, we can't sniff at anybody and say, you know, um, now nah, I got bigger things to do. I got better things to do. Never dismiss a, a person's story. It's important. I, I love it. Everybody as they're as they're your equal. She's dropping those wisdom nuggets, victory people. You need your notebook. You need your notebook because you're gonna have to refer to this. And you know, if you find a comment that's really interesting and that really strikes your heart, drop it in there. Let us see the love. And look at Miss Wendy Jones here. My iron sharpeners are on the line. Wendy, we love seeing you on here. And doesn't she just lift everybody up? Look at that. Oh. Yes, she lifts everybody up, Wendy. She sure does. Oh, Wendy lifts me up too. Oh, I tell you, look, Loris is on the line. Never dismiss this person's story. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. So I am I'm excited because so you do the first the first year now, and you're in this. You know, and, and, and what's interesting is, despite the confusion, you said, okay, I'm going to do this again. 
<laughs> I must love confusion, right? <laughs> But you bring order to confusion. You have this way of bringing order to people's lives and you have this calmness and the, the way that you go about it. So so for those who, people who don't know, because, you know, there, there are many people on here who do know, but anybody listening live and on the replay who have no clue what the 100 accomplished women are about. And I see Serena Wills. She's um, she's in from Washington. So Washington, she's in here tuning in from Washington. Hi, Serena. And she's an accomplished writer. Um Tell us, what is 100 ABC Women? What is it? What is the mission? Oh, our mission really is to biennially celebrate Black women's accomplishments. That's really what it is, to, to celebrate it. Too many of our women have done great things and they've been hidden for far too long. And as Denise, Jean, and I keep saying, we are making the invisible visible. They got to be visible. We got to hear these stories. But one thing that struck me in particular is that people do a lot of great things, but you never hear about it. It's not documented anywhere. We want to make sure it's documented. Your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren must hear about your story. Mm -hmm. They need to hear it. The children to schools got to hear those stories. They got to yes. know that Black women contributed to the fabric of this nation. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Talk yep. about it, Donna. We do. As a and as a little contribution we think we make, it is huge in the eyes of others. You make such big differences, and they need to appreciate that. And we need to appreciate them. We have so many trailblazing women. Yes. Yes. And we, and they, we, as Denise said, where are they? We're putting them in the book. Yes, yes. They're putting them in the book so people know about them. If you can't find it here today, look in our book. Look on our database. We have a database of these women and a little bit of history about them. 300 are in there right now. House. There are 300 women. And if, and if you are 100 ABC Women alumni, drop your name in the chat. Let people look you up and see who you are and tell us what you're doing because it's important. And, and the fact that you are pulling women from all over Canada, from all walks of life. Like it's not just, you know, the doctors, the lawyers, you know, the, it's the event planners, it's, it's the moms, it's, it's everybody that you're pulling together. And, and so when you look at this publication, what do you see that is so significant as well with this thing, not just being, you know, here's an award because, you know, many people get an award but you're documenting this. Why is this really going to be significant in the, in the no. years to come? I, I don't know if you know this or you've experienced this, Nicole, but many people see black people as a lesser being. Mm, yep. You see us mm -hmm. as a lesser being. You've heard your mother say, you gotta do twice as, you have to work twice as hard as a, a white person to get where you wanna go. You've yes. probably heard that. I'm sure many of your listeners have heard that. Yeah. We have to do it. We have to be better than. Well, we, may, we need to let people know that we are better than. Yes. And we can do things that they cannot imagine at times. Mm -hmm. And I just see, you know what? A lot of black women are just coming out of the woodworks. You know, I, I can tell you about a few of them in our book this year. I, talk, I think about Eugenia Giordio. Uh, she's now Dr. Abby. Uh, she's, a, she's a chemist. She's also CEO of Visions of Science Network. Uh, we've got uh, Hazel Palmer. She's a president and chief executive for Sherburne Health. We've got Sharon Hines. She's a manager at Rogers um, Sports and Media. We've got uh, a few of them, a few women, who, yes, we think they think they're doing something small, but they're doing something magnificent. Yes. Because it's not you. We've got uh, you to future, of course. Today, that not everybody talks about mentoring and coaching. You got to be way up there in the books. They got to be calling you and say, we need your support. We need you to guide us through this because they have been difficult times. The pandemic has brought this out a lot in people. And people are, like you are going to be even more important. Even more well, important. I, I think I'm going. I'm learning to receive those compliments, so I thank you, and I thank you actually for including me as one of the 100 and ABC alumni. And some of them are on the line. We got Miss yes. Joan here, Joan and you know what, Donna? 
I don't even know if you know that Joan has been around Canada for eons and she won't, you know, lie to tell you 77 years and 100 ABC women was maybe the second Joan, you correct me, the second or th acknowledgement she's ever gotten in Canada for the work that she's oh done. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. She has like, you know, That's she hasn't incredible. gotten a Harry Jerome award. She hasn't gotten an order of Canada. She hasn't gotten any of those things, all those big things that everybody no. And so this was like being honored by the people that look like you. Yes. You I and that appreciate so many. I know just by talking to Joe how much of a big honor this has been for her. And then we got, of course, coming up here and she's entertained us too. We got Miss Wendy Jones, teacher, artist, you know, extra mentor. She's just, you know, she's another super califragilistic espialidocious woman. Yes. And of course, Sarah is Sarah is right here, class of 2018. Could you imagine? Could you yeah. imagine? Okay, we need Joan Pierre. I'm putting it out there to you, Wendy Jones. As I got Donna Jones Simon on the line, um, we need the um, the Rogers Center, or if there's something bigger, BMO Field, whatever. I don't know what they're calling it now. What is she up to now? Uh, I think we need to 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 bring all these women together. Could you imagine all of us in one space? Because if impossible, because what twenty eighteen you had what a thousand people attending the event, eleven hundred. Okay, so if we took three three alumni together, so within the next five alumni, we need a big show. We need a big show. We need a big show. All these women in one place. Joan Pierre, you're hearing me. You're feeling me. Okay. <laughs> I hope you and Donna. I'm getting excited for my own self here, Donna. I'm getting carried away on the show. Uh, Loris is saying, celebrating black women, love the variety of women, documenting their amazing stories. Way to go, 100 ABC women. Joan said it was the third. Yeah, the third. But getting one of the 100 ABC made up for it. Yeah, it, it was re it's a really amazing. And you see, Joan says she's here. Oh, God. Sarah is like, Canada isn't ready. Canada isn't re Listen, they need to get ready. You know, like, um, what's her face? Uh, this girl, Tiffany Haddish goes, she ready? They need to get ready for Donna Joan Simmons, Jean Augustine, and Denise O'Neill Green to bring 5,000 women to oh one place. Goodness. Could you imagine? That's, that's very possible. I mean, for the 20, if we didn't have the, um, the pandemic and have to put a pause on that and pivot to a virtual event, mm -hmm. we had about uh, almost 1,200 people who were coming right who are coming but we again we have limited space so um uh, but you know what we also need sponsors we also need sponsors so if you know people want to make us help make us uh, grow and do the things that we need to be doing get sponsors help them and buy the book buy the buy the book not just for yourself but buy it for others because it is a, it is a really good history lesson because i you know just when we look at it I've learned so much about the women across Canada. And that's one of the things that's so significant of 100 ABC women. It's not just women. It's not Toronto-centered. It's not Ontario-centered. It is Canadian-centered. And so you mm -hmm. may mention, Donna, that last year we weren't able to do the show because of the pandemic. What is happening to those awardees? Um, how are you going to celebrate them this year? We're doing it virtually this year. But it's just going to be just as great. So... Um they're going to have a lot to celebrate. The women, you're going to hear the women's voices this year. We never did that before. So I'm really excited about the message this, that they have to bring to the youth, the, the Canadian audience, people in Canada and outside of Canada. They have so much talent to, um, to advise and give their impression of what they are today, how they've contributed to Canada. So I'm really very excited that we have pivoted, and I, like I said to you earlier, we have been very creative in how we can do things. So it's going to be live, a virtual event. It's a hybrid. Uh, we're going to have entertainment. Uh, we're going to have a reception room. We're going to have some games. And and we, we had Joan Pear here. She'll tell you more because she's my event planner for this time around. But it's going to be very exciting. I mean, you know, I can't, I can't say we going to be very exciting without mentioning our sponsors, yes. which is the World Bank of Canada, TD Bank, BIPOC, and CIBC. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't do this without our sponsors. 
And you know, Sarah's right there. Sponsors are key, but so are honorees using their networks to help get sponsors. And yes. you know, with with so much investment being made into BIPOC and to being made into, you know, black women, this is such a significant piece here. And I and I love what Joan says. Purchase it for your children, your grandchildren to give them inspiration. They will see themselves. You know, it's, it's and to, to me, it's almost like, you know, how people when Barack Obama was, you know, inaugurated, people, they saw themselves. They mm -hmm. saw themselves as engineers and as doctors and as the possibilities exist. So what is the date? Let's give them the date again for the virtual event and how people can attend that event to celebrate the 100 2021 alumni. What is 2020? 2020. 2020. Yes, 2020 and 2021. Right. So it's going to be September, Saturday, September 18th, and it's going to start at 8 p.m. And it's going to be virtual. So we will be sending out um, the links to participate in this, in this virtual event. We've hired an organization who is very experienced, very professional, and will be helping us to deploy this event. Um, exciting stuff. I, I wanted to mention, I didn't mention, and I think this is worth mentioning to the audience here. Um, in terms of the quality of women that we have, right. and it's the 2020 women. And I'm not just pointing her out because, um, you know, she's uh, somebody you should recognize, but her name is Cynthia M Mufandeza. She is from Nunavut, and she's a first black city councillor there. Wow. Um, and she from the Northern Territories, sorry. Um, she's a co-owner of Best Mover. So she has her own moving company. I mean, when I hear her story, and she's she's grown her business into three different provinces. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And when she came wow. here, when she came to Canada, she had nothing. And she has grown her business. She's just an amazing speaker. If you want to hear her talk, amazing speaker. You will hear her on our fireside chats. She's one of our panelists. But she's, I just admire her for what she's done, for how she's in a remote area where yeah. you, she probably was the only black person, <laughs> where she was probably the only black person there. I just said, I just find that story so uplifting. And I think if we want to learn history, it's, 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 I think even time, every time I go into one of the books, I'm always amazed because you just can't all take it up in one day. You just, yep. it's just so much to learn about the, the women and what they're doing around Canada and around the world, because they're not just impacting Canada, they're impacting the world. And Sarah, I love that. This is, this is special. She bought the book for her mom, but presented it to her in Africa in 2019. Now that's, oh goodness. that's special. Oh that my goodness. is special, Sarah, that, that really is special. And you know, along with, with the, um, yeah, show the book, show the, I should have brought my book out. It's so pretty. It's a book. We need to get some hardcover, Donna. We need to do. We need to do a hardcover edition. That'll be the 50th anniversary. Never, the 50th anniversary. Mind, never mind. I can't give okay. out all my secrets. Okay. Okay. Not all your secrets. Okay. Okay. Joan Pierre, you see, I get in. I get in. Uh, if I go a little training here, I get in buffy on the line. I get in buffy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in addition to the show this year on uh, in September, you're doing a symposium. We're doing a symposium. Um, you want to tell them a little bit about the symposium? Just a, a little hint? It is an opportune time to talk about mental health. Yes. And so our symposium is all about mental health. We're going to be talking about how the brain works. We're going to have a guest speaker, a keynote speaker. We're going to have panelists. We're going to talk about how, we do, how, the, how mental health impacts families, yes. the socioeconomic impact, the caregivers. We often yes. forget about caregivers, the people who have to get up at day and night, night and day to look after some their loved ones. So we talk about those things as well. So um, we want you to show up. It's a free event. By the way, all these events are free. They're so this free. is why we need the sponsors. This That's is why, why we, we need, need the sponsors. sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> but we want people, I mean, Nicole, it's important yes. that not only our black people get educated, but our nation gets yes. educated about the women, the black women in this country and so, the impact, whatever the economics have on our black people, the socioeconomic impact on our health, 
we, the people need to know all this good stuff. It's yes, important. They do. They, it, they, cannot they do. Be, it cannot be the hidden story anymore. We can no longer be invisible. We must no longer be invisible. And, you know, as women, we have to, and, and I think this is what you, Gina, and, and, and Donna have done um, Denise. so well. Denise have done so well is show that, it, that this competition thing is, is no more. We must complement each other. We must lift each other up. You know, it's like we say, lift every voice and sing. Let us lift every voice and sing mm -hmm. to each other. Lift every voice and sing to the world who we are and, and embrace the love that we can give to, because we're better together. We're stronger together. We're more united together. And, and that's just so much a part of it. And so, okay. So we, we're, we're honoring 2020 honorees in 2021. However, you are still sticking with awardees for 2022. I don't even know when you sleep. Anywho. So <laughs> if, 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 um, if now that you want to nominate somebody, like what is the process and how do people get nominated? How do you be, how do you even get considered to be yeah. an alumni? Good question. Good question. Um, Nicole. So our, our nomination process is open. Just go to our website. It's right on our landing page. You can see the nomination form. You just click on it and you begin to nominate somebody, but there are some criteria in order to nominate people. And by the way, you can not only nominate people, you can nominate yourself. I'm not an honorary, by the way. I need to let you know that. I'm not one of the What? I'm you not. guys are honorary honorees, I'm just saying. <laughs> the criteria to become an honorary is one's willingness to support Black girls and women. We also want to ensure that you live and work in Canada at the time of your application. You're willing to support activities related to organizations that support work um, for marginalized youth right. um, and to advance their activities. Um, demonstrate some leadership through role modeling and or volunteer activities. So those are the criteria. It's right here on the form when you, can, when you apply. Most importantly, you can apply, you can nominate yourself. Don't be shy. Yes. Don't be shy. Love so that. That's Don't be shy because sometimes. We, and it's letting people know you're out there. It's letting people know you're out there because you might be doing something that somebody doesn't even know. Yeah. And they need to know that you're out there. Mm -hmm. We need to know that you're out there. Absolutely. I've had people when we call them, tell them you are one of our honorees. They said, me? Me? I don't deserve that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. And it's so, it's so, so important. And you know, and it was, you know what I found really um, great over this pandemic was the initiative that you, you put forward to the team about doing these fireside chats. And, you know, we had all had a lot on the go, but I'm so glad that you, you made sure that we, we, we did it. We accomplished 100 Canadian black Canadian women accomplished something else and did these fireside chats, which you're 33. about to launch on Saturday. 33 Thank fireside you. chats. Tell the people about these fireside chats. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sarah, before we go there, Sarah says, get the husbands to nominate the wives. Yes. <laughs> nominate the wives. Yes. <laughs> nominate your moms. Nominate your sisters, nominate your aunties, and husbands and partners, nominate your wives. Just saying. Okay, that was a brief commercial, Blake. And we're going to talk about 100 ABC Women Fireside Chats. So tell us about these Fireside Chats. Why was this so important? And what is a Fireside Chat? In my truly accent. It's having some fire burning and you're sitting down and you're chatting. Fortunately yes. or unfortunately... During the summertime, we don't need fireside chats, but we will in the winter. Who knows? Yes. Um, we may have a cold enough winter. We have the fire, fire, um, the fireplace going. But basically, it's a it's a chat amongst people about things that are important to them, things that matter to them and to other people. Mm -hmm. So we're one. Our goal is to really get those conversations out there to the public um, that impacts Black people. The, that impact black people. So we're starting off with our kickoff on this coming Saturday at 3 p.m. And we would have three uh, at 3 p.m. every single Saturday until uh, March 12, 2022. 
the 33 of them, and we are very excited about them. So you, you, if you want to um, register, go on our website. It's right there. You say how to register for the Fireside Chat. You click on the ones that you're interested in. We will send you an email to let you know that you're in and you, you link to join the conversation. But the conversations are so important. You know, one of the things that are really exciting, what is really exciting me are topics like um, developing parenting skills. I wish I had that. Maybe I'd be a better mother. I don't know. Being a black artist in Canada, the world of entertainment. What about the media? We've got like Finella Bruce um, and Patricia Mauer on that on that um, conversation. Uh, really very excited about it. Building a strong strategy for your business. Mental health matters within the black community. It's all about engineering. We've got a lot of engineers. Oh, the young engineer, the young engineer, the young girl that's the engineer, she blew me away. Blew me away. Yes. Yes, yes. We talk about um, building financial literacy. If if we as black people knew how to manage our money from our from the get go from a very early age, we'd be all millionaires, maybe billionaires. Branson yes. wouldn't want. Yes. We would be telling Branson what to do with his money, and he'd, he'd be <laughs> listening to us. <laughs> and, and the list goes on. We want to advocate for the marginalized youth. We want to fight anti racism. Uh, we want to let, let people know more about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Maybe just at the tip of the iceberg. We want to talk about beauty in the eyes of the beholder. We use the experts within the database, the 100 ABC database, to have these conversations. You're hearing it from some experts, some professionals, people who know what they're talking about. Yes. And you know what? We're very, very articulate. Who know what they can presenting themselves. Okay. How come I didn't know about her? Yes. You know, what can she come and I, I don't even know what is I get blown away when I listen to some of the tapes at times. Yeah. Because I am just so so proud of my people. So proud of my people. I'm and so you know, we learned I, I I I'm so glad that I was included in those fireside chats behind the scenes because just listening to the women and what they're doing across the across Canada and making the impact around the world and it's, it's just blowing my mind so many sisters in STEM yes Sarah mm -hmm. business education finance um, it's 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 going to be something something else you must must tune in um, thank you Brenda great fireside chats great job ladies very interesting topics yes. celebrate all you ladies thank you thank you thank you we have businesses we need to support oh, the businesses dr. Well. Akwatu Kente is online listening to us we are all proud and thank you dr Akwatu. we love you and we are proud of you and the work that you're doing with the black scientists and covid 19 and making sure that we get the information that we need um as a community and to deal with the the myths and to get the understanding about the COVID and the vaccine. So thank you, Dr. Akwatu, uh, for tuning in and for making sure that uh, we know this. And he was actually a guest recently on the show, mm -hmm. making sure that we got the information. And and he has some serious female scientists on his team. So kudos to, to Dr. Akwatu. So is there anything else about the Fireshy Chat, the partnerships that you want to speak to? Who's partnering with you to make sure that these, these uh, Fireshy Chats are coming to light? You know, I cannot thank Jason Moray, president of BIPOC Executive Search. He approaches and say, I want to be a sponsor. Yes, that's what I love. And we didn't go to him. He came to us. I want to sponsor. I really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. I wish more sponsors could be saying the same thing. He's making our world tick. And um, we got to do this again. We got, I had so many more topics. Yes, I have so many more topics, but not enough time, because this meant every Saturday and every Sunday I tied up the, oops, I got to finish this very very quietly, the lifestyle of Nicole, <laughs> Michelle Green, Sambo Savaye, <laughs> and uh, who else do I? <laughs> we, we 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 took we everybody had, and, and Alison Perez. and Allison. Allison Perez, yes. Norma, Norma Wilson, who is our, Norma chief, Wilson, who is our, our chief, chief vice president. 
<laughs> yes, yes. We tied up all these people's time every single week. And I began to feel worse and worse and worse and said, we got to stop now. So we needed a break. So we've done 33. We got a lot more topics to cover. And everybody's saying, I remember um, my dear friend, Anania Oyadel, she said, we got to have a part two of this. And then I heard Harriet Thornhill for financial literacy and Christine Williams say, we got to have a part two. And then Beauty and the Beauty in the Eyes of the Beholder, we had Kerez and others who were saying, we got to yes. have a part two. I'm going, everybody wants a part two because the other things to talk about that we just couldn't cover in that one session. So we got a lot more work to do. So Nicole, I'm looking forward to just passing the baton to you, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. I I I'm, I'm Sarah, close your ears because I, I, I feel I feel Sarah saying something. She's typing something as you're talking. I can tell she, she's typing something as you're talking. She's <laughs> saying, I know what she's saying. She was a moderator, an amazing moderator. She is she, an amazing moderator. And is, isn't she, Sarah going to be one of your co-hosts? At, um, she's going to be the moderator for the Fireside Chats as well as you. You guys going to be just my rock. You're going to be my I need rock. a wardrobe. I need a wardrobe allowance. <laughs> okay, we, we'll work on that, Nicole. We'll work on that. <laughs> I need a wardrobe allowance. But you know what? It, it is so exciting, and I'm, and I'm so happy that we're able to do this. And the conversations, I'm telling you, you know, I, I literally i am trying to figure out, I would literally love to interview every woman every 100 accomplished women not I, it can't be 100 now we're what 333 what are we at be careful oh gosh be careful what you ask for Oi. i'm telling you i asked i let me give you an example i asked them i asked the 2020 women i said we want 40 second sound bites um for the upcoming book launch and gala and i'm getting two minutes two and a half minutes i'm sorry i said 40 seconds so be careful what you ask. These women can talk and they're very articulate. You want to hear more and more of them. So be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Well, you know, if anybody wants to get involved, what are you looking for in terms of volunteers? Because we're all volunteering our time um, in terms of sponsor. What are you looking for? So as we start winding down, I want to make sure that people live and on the replay, share, share, share. If you're working in corporate Canada, whatever part, you know, we're hearing people saying, we want to invest well. It's time to put your money or your resources, whatever it is, where your mouth is. What are you looking for? I'm looking for financial support. That's number one. Yes. You can't you can't do things without money. That's money makes the world go around, right? Yes. And we also looking for people who have social media skills. Okay. That's important for me. And good communication skills as well. I'm gonna probably be looking for more editors this year for the book. Um, because that takes a lot of time. You know, uh, we as uh, human beings, we always want to make our make sure our stories are right. Yes. Black people want to make sure it even it is perfectly right. Yes, yes. <laughs> we grew up that way. We grew up that way. We were groomed that way. So you, you can't make a mistake with with my people. Yes. So I need more editors, but but basically, I want people who are committed to getting the work done. You know, I don't want you to say that I'm mm. going to help you and you disappear then we, somebody's left in the lurch. We want people who yeah. are committed, who want to make sure that we look good, who are professional, who are creative and articulate, who represent 100 ABC women. Awesome. And, and I'm right now my volunteers do exactly that, yeah. but we probably would need some more because you do and, need- And I know your people. heart. And if, if anybody knows the heart of Donna, Denise and Jean, they want to be able to pay people to do the work because this is becoming something that's full time. And the only way we can pay, pay individuals is by getting the support, the financial support. We yeah. want to give gifts to all our all our honorees that they get a beautiful gift box and, you know, feel the love. And if you, okay. you know, we have black business owners out there. We want to be able to share your products with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Could, you, could you imagine 100 black? And I remember my gift bag. It had beautiful stuff from, from, from black entrepreneurs. Imagine 100 black women getting products from you as a black business owner, you know? Absolutely. So think about it, people. There are ways that you can get involved. Even if you can't come on, do the social media, or you can't write, get creative. We're, we have no box in the 100 ABC women. We are looking for the movers and shakers and those people who are innovative, 
and are coming out here. And it is so important that we have you be a part of this. So Donna, as we start winding down, I have a, I have a, a couple personal questions for you. I'm going back to the personal thing again. Just, just a little. Okay. Now that you have been interviewing all these women, you've gone through, you know, a beautiful time here living in Canada and in the world and coming from St. Kitts, what would you say to your younger self now? To my younger self, I would say you did well. Mm. You did well. My dream was always to write a book and it's coming up to book number four. Yes. So I did well. And uh, if I were to do it over again, I'd probably, you know, go back to school. Mm. I'd probably go back to school and get a higher education. My father always said, without an education, you may as well be dead. Mm. I never knew what he meant by that. But he says, it's something that nobody can take away from you. Yeah. Yeah. And so he always pushed his 14 children to get a good education. He always pushed us. We couldn't always appreciate on oh, our homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lumber, <laughs> <by> those <laughs> kind of things. <laughs> but now we appreciate education. And so any little kid I hear who's doing well, man, I'm with them all the way. Right. I am with them. I said, I just want to give you a hug. I want to be able to support you. How can I support you? And that's, that's what I want to do. So my yeah. younger years is I wish I had more education. Mm -hmm. um, I I didn't have a choice. We didn't have the money to send yes. us to school and that kind of thing. I had to work my way through it. I hear I hear kids grumble their parents not paying for the wedding. I'm going. Parents supposed to pay for weddings. Yeah. <laughs> so you know I had to work my way up. Like I said to you earlier, yeah. I had to do a full time part time. A job and go to school and pregnant. Yes. I love it. What would so, you like it to be known for? Pardon? What do you want your legacy to be known for? My legacy was to the fact that I was able to help, help other black women in, um, get documented in a book. That's my legacy. That's what I want to see as my legacy. That I, I did that. whatever I could to ensure black women's um, stories were documented. The black women are being recognized. And I know I couldn't do a lot of this work without my dear friend, Jean Augustine. Yes, yes. And Denise, yes. of course. Yes. And I, I would I, be, I'd be remiss if Norma Wilson, my long-term mentor, wasn't there behind me every single time of the way. Every time. She's fully behind me, a million and one percent, always. We're sending lots of, lots of love to her. Lots of love to Auntie Norma. Lots of love. I call her Auntie Norma. 88 years old. 88 years young. Young. Ripper Stepper. <laughs> and she's still going. She's still going. Thank God. And and mm -hmm. so my my question to you as we wrap up is, if you were to define victory, what would that definition be for you? Because you're the big big, big shoe. My victory is my my books, my victory. How, I, I should I shouldn't say this too loud because my children, uh, uh, you know, the fact that my children are who they are today, I, yeah. I think I've, I've had had some victory there, and my grandchildren as well. I'm no spring chicken here. I do have grandchildren. Uh, hard to <laughs> believe, but go ahead. <laughs> and the fact that my husband and I can travel every single year outside the pandemic. We make it um, our um, a priority to travel at least four times a year to somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. For me, that's so important. Getting the brain back in, refresh your brain, and rejuvenate yourself is critical to me. That mental refreshment is important. So that's that's what I want to do. I I love that. Well, Donna, thank you for being a part of the show tonight. Thank you for sharing your love, your wisdom, you, Jean, and Donna. And, you know, you have a, a plethora of women behind you that are supporting you. 
And I hope from this show that those who are listening live and on the replay, that you will become involved with the 100 ABC Women legacy of celebrating women. We're up to what this is going to be the third the third era of women. So 300 women and about to be 400 in 2022. So come on, people. We need you involved. We need to celebrate. Nominate, 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 because next yeah. year it's even going to be bigger than this year. And even though we're going to be just, I wouldn't even say just, I think one of the beautiful things for this year, because we're able to do it virtually, people are going to be able to tune in from all over the world. All over the world. Weren't able to tune in before. So this is an opportunity to be involved, be a part of history, be a part of the legacy of 100 ABC women, which is a 100 accomplished black Canadian woman. And Donna, is there anything you want to say before I do the closing of the show? Is there anything else you want to say before we go tonight? I just want to say thank you, everybody who supported 100 ABC Project. You know, we've had some people who dropped out. We've had some people who passed away. Um, and f- thank all the honorees who said, yes, I want to be part of this, mo- this journey with you. We couldn't do it without you. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, I'm going to give you some flowers from, from those listening live. We appreciate you more than you know. You're a special gem. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful conversation. Thank you, Sarah. A great legacy for future generations. And Loris, awesome. Serena is reminding us committed people who will get the job done. Yes, indeed. Investing in smart people, investing in black women is a smart move. Yes, it is. And everybody, we thank you so much for tuning in to the Victory Speak show tonight. You can catch the replay on YouTube at Victory Speak 7. You can catch it on um, Facebook at Victory Speaks 77. Share, share, share. You know what? Sharing is caring. And I would love for you to share it. And uh, on Tuesday, you can catch me on Clubhouse. We're going to have a beautiful conversation about if you want to know how to to speak and and all those tips. I'm going to be with Coach Danny Stone, Love More and Dr. Vibe. So show up in Clubhouse. Uh, We want to talk to you. We want to share. Check out the Victory Speaks podcast where I speak about how to live a victorious lifestyle, giving you the tools about the victory formula. And I want to leave you with this quote. Albert Pike says, what we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others lives on forever. I've been telling you that, and I hope it's sticking in you. Remember, love is in the details. Every day, seek to have an inspired conversation with someone you love or someone you meet today or have met along the way. Your conversations can be inspired by your truth, your love, your story, and make sure it's meaningful. And remember, sometimes all you need is a smile. And even with the mask on, know that that smile comes through. Have a vision. Be intentional. Cultivate your vision. Walk and be transformative in whatever you do. Be celebratory. Give someone their flowers. And remember to take time to restore yourself and yield to the process. Be humble. And you will create that victorious mindset. And so I'm going to leave you with tonight two videos. We're going to show you a little bit from the, um, as Donna and I sit here, we are going to show you a bit of the uh, 100 ABC Woman video, and then we'll close out. Thank you for tuning in so much. Uh, may Bye you continue chats. to be blessed. 100 accomplished Black Canadian women. Hold on coming up hold on we gotta get it we gotta get it up on the screen here we're not we're not leaving until that comes up on the screen here there we go we're gonna start it over here we had a little technical glitch with wi-fi fireside chats with 100 accomplished black canadian women How far you have come on your own, but never alone. Through the rain and through the shine, here's your moment. Standing in your destiny One